Two of our main ingredients are public space and our audiences. And our programming takes place around the city of Toronto in various neighborhoods and unique and alternative spaces. There's no program or route that is shared before the event. We're really asking our audience members to trust us and just come along for the ride. A lot of hinges on this next move. Oh, man. Oh, come on. Okay, I'll sorry. I'll stop. I'll stop. Thank you. We are at the 20 minute mark. Meaning you have 20 minutes okay, left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. The bike tour is an interesting project model and sort of our, our first model and what we were first known for. It's where the name Art Spin comes from, referring to the bicycle wheel. Um, <laughs> So Lane and I met in a, a restaurant in downtown Toronto. I was a bartender, Lane was a server. I think I had yet to start art school, and you were the, one of the first art world people that I met. We realized very quickly that the bicycle as a tool to move people around was practical and served this function, but it also created this undeniable level of energy. The simple act of riding your bike from one stop to another, people felt like they were taking part in a, in a very performative way. We had a conversation towards the very end of that first year, uh, realizing that maybe if we applied for some grant funding that we could do something more interesting the following year. Our very first show really came about because of an opportunity we had to access this amazing 10,000 square foot raw warehouse space that was originally the Viceroy rubber factory. And it was being converted at the time into a series of storage lockers and we were able to access it in this little window of time to put on a fleeting one-night exhibition. It was our first experience working with an old industrial space, a space that was in transition. And I think we were hooked from that point on. It felt like it was a moment of history frozen in time. One project that comes to mind for our exhibitions is one we did in 2013 that took place in the Tower Automotive Building, which is now the home of MoCA. We had somehow got the developers to literally give us the keys to this, like, 11-story abandoned building. And we were allowed to produce an exhibition just on the first, on the main floor.
2015, we were programming a bike tour sort of in the area around Ontario Place, and we were looking for a site just to house one or two artworks as a stop on the tour. So we would cycle in, we'd be there for 15, 30 minutes, and we'd cycle out again. So we approached the Ontario Place Corporation and they kind of surprisingly gave us permission. As soon as they said yes, we started realizing there was a lot more potential in the site. And seeing the reaction of the audience that was on that bike tour, it was incredible. <laughs> It was clear to us that uh, we, needed to, uh, we needed to return. Our timing was lucky because the Ontario Police Corporation, they were interested in opening up the site a little bit and they wanted to really sort of reopen slowly and carefully and finding ways of programming it. A lot of the other organizations approaching them wanted big upgrades to the site, and we actually wanted it just as is. The ask was minimal, but then of course, over the, the mere 11 months we had to make the project, it grew exponentially beyond any of our expectations. over 30 partnering arts organizations who presented work of their own. As the artistic directors, we vetted things, but a lot of partners brought in really interesting projects that we wouldn't have otherwise reached. That was a really great way of broadening the scope of not only the artists but our audience and as a tool to get the project done as well. It wouldn't have been possible without bringing together a larger um, faction of the, the arts community. I'm just smiling because I'm remembering on open night we had Mayor Tory um, deliver some opening remarks. And the place you find the soul is not at the Toronto Dominion Centre with great respect to everybody who works there and I used to work there and it's not at City Hall and it's not at a food truck, it could be there, but it really comes from the expressions of people um, in the arts who, who tell their stories, singing. Their We're like changing songs. into our fancier clothes in our production office with like four other people around us yelling at us to hurry and... Quite literally putting signs in place uh, just before getting dressed to uh, be on stage with the mayor for his opening remarks. <laughs>We were so focused on just getting this thing sort of open to the public that it wasn't until the, the end of that first night that I think it really dawned on us that we've got another like nine days of this. We realized that going back to the same site would go against the spirit of really exploring the possibilities of temporal ephemeral programming, which we find really exciting and special.
the scale of InFuture in a lot of ways, including the press coverage, fed into some of our future successes. We were invited to curate an exhibition area for Nuit Blanche at InFuture. We had our first conversation about it excitedly with you know, someone from the city. And I think the exposure to a much broader audience outside of our like art world niche had a lot of value. We also, I think, have found ways of taking elements of, of what we've learned and expanding on those. In future was so complex and so broad, but we can take little pieces of it and push them further along. A lot of these things aren't all that different from what you do when you're in the hospitality industry, working with really tight timelines and in high pressure situations. I'm not interested in doing this work alone. There is a lot of stress and it's really challenging. And I think if we had um, really separate roles in separate departments, you would be alone in a lot of things. And so instead we've opted to basically share a role. And we might take turns taking a lead on one thing or another, but on the whole, we, we sort of share everything that we do and it's quite collaborative. And it's way more fun. Uh, Gareth is someone who's really interested in, in weaving. Uh, you may have seen a piece that he did uh, at In Future. There are so many moving parts to you know, any of the projects that we present. It's important to trust the person that you're, you're working with. All of the anxiety, all of the doubt, all of the uncertainty and stress, it helps so much to have someone to share that with. This is maybe without us expecting it turned into an exercise in uh, developing a, a really close uh, friendship and love for one another. Often the space informs what we might do there. It's history or simply it's form or aesthetic. But with the changes the city is going through, the incredible rate of development, space is becoming more and more rare, uh, at least the types of spaces that we like to work with. We find ourselves still working with these ridiculously short timelines because the way in which you access these spaces doesn't really have a, a set formula. These opportunities are fast and fleeting and you do the best you can while you have these chances.
I think we have a lot of sort of internal motivation of wanting to do things, um, you know, to push ourselves and making sure that we're always broadening that and learning and growing. But I also think that the audience response helps to keep us going as well. We have a really strong following. We have really wonderful, dedicated people that have been coming to our projects time and time again over the years. There's almost an element of like responsibility towards them to keep surprising them, keep them on their toes. And what keeps me coming back, it's always that sense of the new. By the very nature of what we do, we have no idea what's coming next. Stay up here. Stay on the street.